his story um, and understanding your history. Exactly. Um, before I was a writer, I was a listener. I grew up sitting on the front porch listening to my grandparents and my mother uh, tell stories, wonderful family stories about people that I knew only by name, but I knew them very well by the stories that influenced me in my life. My, my mother used to read Dunbar, Paul Lawrence Dunbar, for me. And I love the rhythms of his language. He wrote in, he was the first, well, he was one of the early African Americans to make a living as a writer. And he wrote poetry, novels, essays, and whatever. He wrote in standard English and then the language of his mother, which was a slave dialect. So I grew up hearing these two voices as my mother would recite. Little brown baby with sparkling eyes, come to your pep and sit on his knee. What you been doing, son? Making sand pies? Why, well, look at that baby. You're as dirty as me. And look at that mouth, that's molasses I bet. Come in, Maria, wipe off his hand. Bees going to get him and eat him up fast as they can. When I hear that, I say, Mama, do it again, do it again. And then she'd do another one, but this time it would be in standard English. <clears throat> An angel robed in spotless white, bent to kiss the sleeping night, night. Woke to blush, but the spirit was gone. Men saw the blush and called it dawn. <clears throat> when she finished, said, do it again, do it again. <laughs> no, off to bed. But that was my first book, Paul Arnson. I wanted to do that book so that my students could have the joy of knowing this poet. My grandmother told ghost stories, hair-raising ghost stories, and then sent me into the house to get her a glass of water in that old creaky house. And there was a, a table that had claw feet, and I just knew there was a monster under there. And when I went by, it was going to grab me by my ankles pull me underneath that table I'd never be heard of again. So I was very careful going by that table. The Dark Thirty, Southern Tales of the Supernatural, comes from those stories. My grandmother could just make up a story and scare you to death. And that's what I did. I wrote the stories, although my friend Jeffrey said they weren't that scary. <laughs> and then my grandfather, my beloved Daddy James, he told wonderful stories about little girls who could outrun the wind and outsmart a fox. And so I took his characters and I wrote them. But I had to be true to his language. Like Dunbar was true to his mother's dialect, I was true to my grandfather's southern dialect as well. I dare say a little girl should be terrified of me, said the father. Well, whatever you are, you sure think a heap of yourself said Flossie, spoken like my grandfather would say. And I do that today. I keep, when I tell a story that he told, I always tell it in his voice. 
When it's my mother's voice I hear, I let her guide me. Or my grandmother, I let her guide me. I hear their voices. I remember their stories. And I pass them on whenever I can to young readers everywhere.